As defined in an old Greek movie, the true meaning of kephi is that desire left over after pain and sorrow. It's an outburst that turns into a smile, a song, or a dance. Kephi is when you enjoy life in a holistic way and accept things you can't control but still find meaning in them. And sometimes, kephi is even stronger when life is tough, when you're grateful for the full spectrum of your emotions. Life is full of such contrasting moments, and that's what we talk about in the Kefi Podcast. Welcome to the Kefi Podcast, Gary Leip. I'm super happy to have you here. I mean, it, it's been a while, right? <laughs> it has. I mean, we only met in person once. Uh, yeah. Most of our communication has been through the book of face. Yeah, but even the electric communication has been stalling. Yeah. Yeah, I found that, especially with uh, this current pandemic, everything uh, everything seems to ground to a halt. Yeah, there you go. Like, it's we, we actually are supposed to have more time, but we don't. You know, yeah. like was it exactly. like, oh, it's it's a pandemic because um, and, and and you shouldn't be working right now because you don't have anything to do anyway and you're just at home. <laughs> you don't go, and, I, and I'm always like, no, they, like for me, work wise, nothing changed. Uh, ditto. <laughs> yeah, I I I had there were no changes. I was yeah. already working from home, so um, yeah. my wife was the only one who had a big change, and she mm. loves it. Really? Yeah, she loves working from home. So. Um, <laughs> It'll be hard for her when she if she, when she has to go back next year. So, yeah, but. Gary, what is it that you're working from home? What what exactly are you doing? So many things. Um, I'm working for a studio called Cryptic Studios uh, here in the Northern California area, and they're working on a. This is already announced, so I can talk about it. They're working on a video game with um, Wizards of the Coast for a Magic: The Gathering RPG. And yeah. I'm doing concept art for their characters. So I'm designing creatures and characters uh, that are known for or known in the magic world. So, yeah. And, and then, um, so that is the thing that pays the bills. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> then, uh, as I mentioned to you off, uh, off mic, I, I started doing, um, working uh, towards a voiceover career. It's something mm -hmm. I, I'd always wanted to do. And finally, you know, have the time, I have a little bit of money, I can invest in myself and set up a studio. And so I'm doing that. Um, and then the thing I've been, my passion project, what I've been working on for the past five years, five years? Oh my God, six years, <laughs> is um, <laughs> starting to write and illustrate my own young adult fantasy series, mm. um, which... That's really what I want to be doing is yeah. telling stories and illustrating them. So you, where, where can people check this out? Is this something you have on Instagram or do you have a website for this that is specifically, what, what's the name of the project in the first place? Like The first book in the series is called Rune and the White Raven. It's spelled mm -hmm. R-O-O-N. Um, mm -hmm. And you can go to the runeseries.com just to see. There's a gallery of artwork. Um, I think it's up to date. I haven't mm -hmm. um, checked it in a while because I've been mostly focused on writing and then also the job. Um, yeah. And then I also post uh, updates primarily on Instagram. And my Instagram is uh, Gary Labe Art. So, yeah. Um. Gary, you know that I'm inviting people to talk about uh, the current struggle and also about the general struggle that is um, work-life balance. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Also, like, like um, mental health is a big word. I'm, I'm trying to not throw it around because I'm not a professional. But uh, in, in general, I think it's it's super interesting to hear the stories from the people and maybe find something that, that they relate to and which inspires yeah. them to maybe make a specific move. So looking at yourself, what would you say, how is your work-life balance at the moment and how has it been in the past? Um, it was a struggle. Uh, I'll start with the past. So before moving to the Bay Area, I lived in Los Angeles. Uh, this is before I had any sort of job in the art industry. Um, I was still drawing. I've been drawing since I was four, but I've struggled to find any sort of work. Um, 
And my goal was to find a studio job. And I, over the, over the course of six years, I made contacts and made friends with people who eventually got me my first job in the Bay Area. And I got into my first studio and I'm like, oh, I did it. I made it. Six months later, I was fired. Everybody was let go. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and then a couple months after that, I started uh, in a new company. And I'm like, this is it. I'm, I'm the only artist here. I'm, I've got to be like a, a lead artist by now. And um, it was very naive thinking. But I was, I was there for f- four years and eventually became their art director. But it was such a chill, like, it was a video game company. It was an independent company. Um, called Making Fun. They did uh, mobile games, social games. Social games at the time, it was like Facebook games. And yeah. they, now they do mobile games. But uh, uh, after four years, they had to reduce their their staff and, and everybody got let go except the skeleton crew. Uh, and it just kind of spiraled. I, I went from there to another company where I was an art director and I was miserable. I'm not going to say what company it was, but I was absolutely miserable, and it, it made me realize that I didn't want to be an art director anymore. It, I was mm-hmm. killing myself trying to please so many people that I didn't, I, I shouldn't have had to worry about, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, eventually, I ended up um, as a as a senior artist, senior concept artist, at the uh, a studio. I, I'm reticent to say to say the names, but um. Needless to say, I was there for about a year and was not happy. The, the, the rose-colored glasses came off really quickly. I was driving um, a pretty much two hours to get to work. So I was spending about four hours in traffic every day uh, with you know no compensation uh, for the time. It was a waste. It was a waste of time. And at, at every turn, I was sort of um, roadblocked. To the point yeah. where I wasn't, I didn't feel I was being taken care of as an artist, and I had a serious discussion with my wife. I had been working on Rune heavily at the time, and she she was at a point in her career where she's like, "Look, if you want to start freelancing, you you can leave your job. I have she she was making enough where she could support the both of us for a short while, mm. and so I took a jump. I, I leaped and. Um, put in put in my two weeks, and after that, I, I, the the first day where I didn't have to sit in a car for two hours just to get to work to a job I didn't want to do anymore, it was there was a huge shift. Like this this um, huge weight was lifted off my shoulders, and it mm. was incredibly freeing. And now I've I've been freelancing since two thousand and sixteen. And one job led to another job, led to another job, and now I, I'm working steadily. I am able to to balance my life a lot more easily. I have time to to exercise, to eat more healthy, which I don't all the time. To, you know, to take care of the stuff that really matters, which is like, you know, you're you take care of your family, take care of stuff around the house. You know, I love I I cook. I, I'm the cook in the house, so I do I handle most of the meals and and. I, it's, it's so nice because the amount of time I spend a good amount of time working, mm-hmm. but it doesn't overshadow the things that are the most important, you know, family and friends and self care. Well, was that something that you had to learn? Was this a process? Was it too much at some point where you didn't have that balance at all? It was when I was working in studios. There yeah. was there was absolutely like I didn't have time to go to the gym. Um, mm. I had to use my lunch breaks if I did want to go to the gym. The last job I had, I I was I got so out of shape, and then sitting in a car for four hours uh, every day took its toll on my body. Um, I woke up dreading going to the office. It made me physically ill. Thinking I have to go to a job to a place that I don't want to be. Mm. And I don't feel I'm appreciated. Mm. Um, and that that takes its toll because, I mean, as creatives, we're already expending a lot of our mental energy, you know, coming up with the designs for for characters or 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 you know, putting putting pencil to paper and trying to come up with something out of this world or outlandish. And that takes a lot out of you. So that coupled with, you know, the 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 taxing, 
amount of time I spent just just getting to and from the office, it was it was seriously affecting my my health physically and mentally. Did you do something about it? Did you see someone? Um, I didn't see someone, but uh, my wife and I would oftentimes meet with a friend of ours. And she does life coaching and that kind of stuff. And we would we would chat with her. She um, and and she she sort of planted the seed of you know some people that I've spoken with have taken to um, following their passions rather than doing what they think needs to be done. Mm-hmm. You know, I have to work in an office. I have to do this. I have to be. An entry level artist, then a senior artist, then an art director. That's the process. And she sort of put it in my head that if I can, and it's going to sound a little, a little, um, I don't want to say whimsical. I'm not sure what the word is, but jumping without a net and just having faith that the world is going to take care of us. You know, there's that, it, it was a huge risk to, mm-hmm. to quit that job. And, it was the best decision, the scariest, but the best decision I'd ever made. And it was such a weird realization that I had to I had to go through everything I went through. I had to work at the companies I worked at. I had to do the jobs I had to, I did to realize that that wasn't what I wanted to do. That wasn't where my uh, my passion was anymore. I love video games and I love working in video games. I love working um, for for Cryptic Studios in the capacity that I'm in now. Mm. But my my end goal, my my passion is for the books that I'm writing. And and I realized that while I was working in studios that I would spend you know, I'd spend 8 to 8 to 10 hours in in the office and then be totally unhappy and then get home exhausted, you know, we'd have dinner I'd sit in front of the computer and I'd, I'd just start writing and immediately, you know, y- y- there's this mental shift where you're like, oh, this is a story. I can get into this. This is so, this is so freeing to create this entire world and do it all on my own. Um, yeah. And, and, and so I had that little outlet, but when I wanted, when I realized that little outlet, I, when I wanted to make that particular outlet what I do for the rest of my life, uh, I had to rearrange some, <laughs> I, had to, I had to make some life choices. Hmm. But I mean, I hear from your voice and, and, and all your, your story in general that you don't have any regrets or are there any? Uh, <clears throat> of, of leaving studio work? Yeah, like, is there something that you're missing? I mean, I can't imagine with driving four hours a day, that's basically like like pretty much all the free time that most people have even left yeah, and you I, even give yeah, it away. I make, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind of making it sound like working in studio was a nightmare 24-7. It, it, that's not mm-hmm. the case. Um, I, there, was, there was one company that I worked at called Blue Shell Games, and it was, it was online. It was um, online... Uh, uh, casino games like <laughs> slot machines and stuff it's not my thing I don't like gambling I don't like casinos um, the work wasn't inspiring but what made that company different was the camaraderie it was a small company everybody was held accountable and the the you know the powers that be the higher ups sat right across the aisle from us there was nobody in an office and um, you could you could take a vacation whenever you needed it. It wasn't a, you didn't have to go through this whole, um, you know, shtick of, I have to fill out this paperwork. I have to accrue so many hours. It was just, I got my work done. I have some time off or I need some time off. And they'd be like, yeah, as long as you're not blocking anybody, take the time you need. And, and it was paid time off, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was the, that's the only job. That's the only company that I worked for that I, um, where I felt respected and I felt needed and it felt like my opinion and my input was appreciated. Um, mm-hmm. And I miss that. I miss that camaraderie, that feeling of working with a team. Um, I don't, I mean, obviously working out of my house, I don't have that anymore. I have my dog. Um, <laughs> I have <laughs> my beautiful wife. And, uh, um, but, you know, as for 
team, it's all through it's all through online communication. It's all through email. It's all on, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, online posting. You know, so it's a different. Um, I don't know. It's a different avenue altogether for me. It took a little bit of getting yet getting used to at first, very freeing, and then sometimes the motivation would drop off, and I would I would just be doing the work because I know I needed to do the work, you know. Yeah. But. I mean, that's that's pretty much what most people have been telling me when they were talking about work life balance that mm -hmm. they used to do something like even even off this this podcast. I mean, like they used to do something that made them realize that it's not what they want to do. Like, how yeah. else are you supposed to find out? Right? You, you yeah. have to to try out things and maybe you have to fail air quotes, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> because obviously, it's not failure, because you took something from it. But um, exactly. In, in the end, in the end, it led you to something better. And you feel balanced right now, right? For the most part, yeah, I mm -hmm. do. I mean, I um, like I said, I know, I know where I'm going. I've had a few wrenches. Like everybody's had a big wrench thrown in their plans this year. Um, for I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I can't think of the reason. <laughs> so what was that? Uh, what was that? No, <laughs> I think it's Trump. <laughs> yeah, it's probably probably Trump. Thanks, jerk. Um, but <laughs> but uh, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know where I know where I want to go. I've had I've been working for the past couple of years with a, a, a literary agent um, who's been helping me get my book ready to sell to publishing companies. And then only a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, after working with them, they were like, "Okay, we're gonna stop working with you now, and we're gonna we're gonna pass on the book." Um, and and uh, it was a shock. It was a shock and it was like a huge, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you, you're shrugging your shoulders. So was I. I'm like, where did that come from? Um, they, you know, I worked with them. I went through round after round of edits um, to try to get the book into some kind of shape where they felt like they could sell it. And then, and then, yeah, it, they, they ended up, you know, they're like, it's not where we want it to go. Um, but, but the thing is that, um, I could be mad, you know, I could stomp my feet and, and scream and, and, and I wanted to, but at the same time, what they left me with the, the, because they know the industry, the, the, you know, book industry better than I do. What I ended up with was a story that I love even more. Um, it, it's, it's, it's better all around for the time I spent working with them. And while, yeah, it does throw a wrench into my, into mm. my plans for, you know, finding an agent, getting, finding a publisher, all that stuff, um, it still sets me up f for greater success in the long run. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, I, and I'll be getting back to that, um, soon because I'm taking a little, a little me time. I'm taking a few weeks off from cryptic work so that I can, focus on the book, work on some edits, and then submit to new publishing companies or agencies. So, You could have seen this as something that is devastating, but what you actually did with it is you transformed it into, well, I just got a better version of my book, and they, they gave me some guides, and like, this, yeah. is, this is brilliant, great. Yeah, I, I got, I, they took the time to get, it, it's, it's funny how I got even connected with them. A, a friend of mine is a fairly successful musician, and she introduced me to them because we were we were working i was writing a musical for broadway with her which is a mm. totally different a totally different thing <laughs> but she said also he's writing this book and then they're like well we have a literary department so and they love the artwork and so i went in and i met with them and and started working with one particular uh agent who was fantastic and then once she got my book she helped me get my book to where you know, to a good spot. She sent it to a couple of her colleagues this past year, and then I worked with them for a few months, and and that's where it ended up. But yeah, I it was. I had it in the back of my head that it was going to go somewhere. Like I would get it to a certain point, and then it'd be, they'd be like, "Yes, we want to sign you," and um, and then we'd be off to the races looking for a publishing company. Um, but yeah, it 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 kind of went 180 degrees in the opposite direction 
And yeah, I was frustrated. I was a little bit disappointed, but there was another part in my brain that, that um, said, look, if this doesn't happen, if they don't, if they don't sign you for any for for some particular reason, then you still have you still have a better book, a better story than when you started out, and that's what that's what I need to take away in order to keep my motivation going. Otherwise, I'll hit a brick wall and and yeah, I'll never get to finish it. You know. What about your voice acting? Um... I mean, that's that's something where I was just surprised because I just knew the the artist Gary Light, right? So where did that come from? Um, I've been doing voices and acting like an idiot since I was a kid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would recite stand-up comedy at the dinner table when I was like eight years old. Um, and um, I wasn't writing it. It was just regurgitating what I'd already heard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then I went to I went to college not for art. I started out as an art major, um, but then decided I didn't really like how they ran the art program. And I was already doing theater, which is something I'd always been passionate about acting and you know making an ass of myself in front of people. <laughs> uh, and and I'd always done voices and accents and stuff like that. And and part of me had always wanted to do voice acting. Once I found out that that was a way, you know, that was a career opportunity. Um, and it wasn't until I had time to think about it this this year where uh, my wife found an article or an ad advertisement online for a free voiceover seminar. I'm like, I'll give it a shot. I'll, I'll see what it's about. And that seminar went nowhere, but it did spark an interest. And I started looking for a coach. Um, I did vocal training and, and he, he, he taught me a lot of stuff. That's um, I, I worked with uh, the Global Voice Acting Academy. They're a California-based, but they have different different agencies um, around down the coast. And um, yeah, recorded recorded demos, and um, I have one. I got one agent, and I've started just putting putting it together because it is something now, especially that I could do from home. I don't have to go to a studio. Yeah, if I'm set up to do it here, you know, which. Mm. It, that's what I've done, as you can see from my blanket fort. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really wonder how these things um, have shaped you in the past. You know, like, um, do you think you would have gone to voice acting and would have been more spontaneous about it if you would still do the whole studio job shtick? Um, I think it would be. It would have been something that I would have thought about um, here and there. Uh, but yeah, I think if I was still in studio, that would have taken up most of my most of my my brain space. Um, but yeah, I think it it was a uh, it's. I mean, it took a few years of working freelance to realize that hey, I've got I've got the time, I've got a little extra money, I can invest in myself, yeah, and and make it happen. So it's it's still a funny thing because. I worked so hard to start my career in art and while I'm not uh, I'm not a big name like you know I've still had a successful career I've been working consistently for 12 plus years and and making a living out of doing what I love um, but there's a difference between you know getting paid to do what you love and getting paid to do what you love but not loving what you're doing you know mm -hmm. Yeah, so. probably also the aspect of not working for yourself. The whole um, aspect of, um, <laughs> of of fulfilling other people's dreams and just getting paid for it. Yeah, that's that's a huge thing. I was kind of tired of of working my ass off and not like make helping helping the higher ups make a ton more money than I would ever see. Mm. You know, so. Yeah, I'm. I, it's it, it, it's weird starting a career from the ground up, and a lot of people think, "Oh, you know what? That's a great idea. I'll start a voiceover a voiceover thing, and that'll just be like a side hustle." It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not a side hustle. There's no side hustle. You you have to put all the work you can into it in order to see results. It's just like anything else. It's it's a career. So yeah, I mean, it's, you you. It's not like you have a sh uh, like a thought in the shower. 
and you're like, I don't know, I should buy a boat or something. It's <laughs> some, it's something yeah, you yeah. have to dedicate yourself into because it's like you just mentioned, it's building up a career from the ground and yeah. even, like even becoming a freelancer after having worked in the studio. This is just as legit building something from the ground up because so far nobody knows you as a freelancer. You have a body of work to show, yeah. but <laughs> doing this as, as a voiceover and you probably didn't never really sat i know like on the toilet whenever you had the idea of having like a, make a funny noise and just record it and then you're like hey i, I did some <laughs> stuff check this yeah, out yeah it's it, exactly right exactly right yeah you don't you don't just say you know what i'm gonna fly a plane and you just go fly a plane <laughs> yeah you gotta train to do it you gotta put in the work uh, so you uh, don't you know kill yourself so uh, yeah yeah yeah, well, you yeah, probably yeah. won't it's, be good at it. I mean, this, it, this will probably it, result in yeah. killing yourself. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it's not <laughs> something you can just go out and just do. Mm. Um, it's it it takes it takes practice. It's like drawing every day, painting every day, because not just because you love it, but because you need to to keep your skills up. Mm. And, and it's the same thing with voiceover. You don't just do an audition and forget about it. You put in the work. You you practiced voices and accents and characters and commercials you, and you do it every day whenever you have time so i'll find mm. like when i'm when i'm like walking my dog <laughs> i'll look like a crazy person because i'm talking to myself in different accents or different <laughs> character voices or <laughs> i'll i'll be in the car driving and i'll listen to a commercial and i'll hear how the actors in the commercial you know sell whatever medicine or car they're selling and i'll mm -hmm. i'll try to pick up you know the ways that you know that they're mm -hmm. pitching their voice or the way that they're selling it and and try to imitate that and it's i i look i guess i look like a crazy person a lot um but you know it's all part it's all part of the part and parcel for for you know starting this type of career it probably works exactly how most people approach um, visual arts too, right? Like if they see a picture they like and they see a it, specific exactly kind of right. shadow yeah. or of yeah. the rendering and everything. And they're like, I'm going to try to apply that. It really is. And I think that having gone through that already with, with art and I mean, I'm, mm. I'm still going through it. I'm not, you never done, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you're always trying to find that next, that next yeah, but level. But you're used to the, to the, to the act of doing that, right? Like, Exactly. Yeah, it's it's something I've I've already done once, and I know I can be successful at it. And it's just it's it's putting in the work. It's it's like with with art, you find you know you find you develop your style over time. You find gold nuggets here and there from different artists whose work you admire. And mm. it's I assume I mean I'm just getting going, but it's the same thing. It's similar with voiceover work. So you you learn from people who have done it before, and and. You know, you take those nuggets of gold wherever you can and, and make it a part of yourself. So, mm. you mentioned earlier, like, you are still in the Bay Area, right? You didn't. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, what I, what I find out when I'm, I'm listening to everybody talking who lives there um, is that it's super expensive to live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is idiotically um, expensive and how does that like i i can i already know that it's a lot of pressure of going freelance when, when my, my son was born i just mm -hmm. went freelance a year later because i never saw him and anything like yeah. it was basically um just a step towards balance and it wasn't the best idea to do it the way that i did it but I just had to to leave the, the the place where I was. So I can't. I really have have the utmost respect for people doing this in an area where rent is so incredibly high. Right. How do you, how do you cope with that? It's a lot of crying. No. Um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 It's. Um, we got we got lucky. We used to live in the city in San Francisco, and then mm -hmm. of five years ago, actually about the time that I started, maybe just after I started working at this uh, my fi the final studio I worked in, um, we decided we we really wanted a dog. That was that was a huge life goal for us as as a family. Mm -hmm. We wanted to have a dog, so 
my wife, Yuki, found a place up here where we are now, and they allowed dogs, and they had no restrictions of any kind, and we're like, we like it, let's take it. And mm-hmm. and that got us out, and um, it got, out, got us out of the city. And uh, um, we found out um, that this this specific building this this area is is rent controlled which which means our our rent generally doesn't go up every year like a lot of places in the bay area and uh, while it is more expensive than you know <laughs> in, in anywhere else um <laughs> we we can we we live in know we live comfortably in knowing that you know come the following year we're not going to be charged an, another thousand dollars, extra thousand dollars a month. It, the, yeah. the rent has only gone up once, and it was only like an extra like hundred bucks a month, and that was that was three three years ago. So we got really really lucky, um, and um, excuse me, especially with especially with the pandemic. Now we found that we've actually saved a lot more money too, because neither of us are driving. Um, and so there's no wear and tear on our vehicles and, and, you know, uh, we don't eat out as much. We don't eat out at all. We don't order food from anywhere. We've been making food since this whole thing started. Uh, mm. and that has saved us a ton of money too. So it's been, it it's been a horrible pandemic, like absolutely awful for the entire world, but financially it, it's helped us. So, mm. um, and from what I've heard recently, I think I'm not sure that uh, the uh, the the housing market is going down now. So, fingers crossed, it becomes more affordable to live here. Who knows? Why? I, like, why, why would that go down? Like, what changed? I think people are leaving. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> like, they can't afford to live here. They're going to places yeah. like Texas. They're going to Canada. They're they're just moving north to Seattle because they're more affordable places to live. Mm. Um, it's, it's hard to stay in a city that you love when it doesn't feel like the city wants you there, you know? So, <coughs> yeah. Um, earlier, like we just mentioned, um, that you are preparing all the food and you're not yeah. eating outside anymore. Yeah. You, you are cooking, right? You mentioned that earlier. How I am. Is, how is that, um, how is that? benefiting your mental health because everybody i know who is cooking is so incredibly relaxed even though like <laughs> they, you actually would think that if you are in the kitchen and you have to deal with a couple of things at the same time if you you're, mm-hmm. i mean cooking is multitasking so yeah. i would think it would be stressing but no is it the whole creation aspect of it what is it um God, that's a really good question. I've been cooking for a long for a long time. I come from a family of people who enjoy cooking and baking, and and so mm. that is sort of ingrained in me. Um, that was ingrained in me at a young age. Um, <clears throat> sorry, um, I th- I don't know what it is. Like obviously, if you're learning a new recipe, there's the stress of oh god, I hope I don't screw this one up. But after you get like a staple of recipes in your back pocket, you can just be like, okay, we're having we're having udon tonight, and you just you just know what you need and you you make it and i think it's just i think it's just the act it it is relaxing it's a little bit cathartic when you can turn your brain off and you're so used to it that you can just your hands just do what they do and, and yeah but you got to get there right you got to get there yeah it's <laughs> turn your head off you know, you can just fly a plane man <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> even like even <laughs> even if even if you're you are learning a new recipe, it's still, you know, m- making food is something that uh, I don't know. There's there's just something about it. It can be a little uh, meditative. It can be a little cathartic, um, and especially lately, this year in particular, I've been more. Um, more focused on self-care. So whereas, you know, the past three years I've been, I've been at my desk. I wake up early. I, you know, I spend the amount of time I need to in front of the computer, which ends up being almost all day. Um, now when I'm feeling, when I'm feeling tired, I'll allow myself to sleep in. I think I'm being more forgiving with myself, which I think is part, uh, was, is important, especially for mental health. 
Like a mm. lot of artists will work themselves to the bone and to exhaustion. And sometimes you have to because you have deadlines and deadlines are creeping up on you. And, um, but I, 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 there's something to be said about letting your batteries recharge, giving yourself permission to sit and play a video game for a couple of hours just to get away from from work let your body recharge take a walk i started running uh you know a couple mm. months ago you know and just getting out and moving um they're all important to the creative process to give yourself a break and 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 not feel guilty about not you know having a pencil in your hand or having a stylus in your hand and working i think that's a, that's one thing that um a lot of uh, younger artists who are, you know, just getting into the industry may not realize for for a couple of years, for a few years until they've established themselves. But you can take a break. You can give yourself room to breathe. You just have to give yourself permission to do that. There are way more artists talking like that right now. I feel like there are more senior artists actually going out of the way and not pretending anymore um, or even living it. I mean, that was just my assumption about pretending because how can I say it's, it's like, usually it was about, you need to grind, you need to work, you need to focus, mm -hmm. you need to do the extra work and you have to work on your own IP. You have to do all this stuff. And now more people are talking like you, more people are saying, don't do this. Don't kill yourself. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do this. And yeah. would, would you like, do you agree? Like, is this like a shift in the approach of being a creative person in 2020? I, I think so. I think that that old, like, obviously, as an artist, you want to constantly improve and you want to do the best you can. And, and you will have to work hard. There's no way around it. You will have to work hard to get better. But once you're at a point where, you know, you're working in a studio, you're working, you know, eight to 10 hours a day, whatever your, whatever your schedule is like, you're going home, you're having a quick meal, you're going to bed, you wake up, you do it all over again. That repetition is awful because you don't allow yourself time to recuperate. Um, it's, it's a create, it's a, it's like a battery. It needs to be recharged. Mm -hmm. You can't just keep going without, you know, physical and mental repercussions it's going to hit you at some point the exhaustion is going to hit you the stress is going to hit you and it may not hit you in a good way like at, a, at the right time like you could be in the office and just lose your you know just you're like i'm done i'm done and then mm -hmm. you just freak out in the <laughs> office which is a terrible place to do that i can freak out at home and i'm totally fine um there's no repercussions for that but but yeah i think that um you know, a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the new, like younger artists that are coming into the industry, they're used to, they're now used to, uh, working at school. Like if they're going to art school, working, you know, late into the night, working until 3am to get their homework done, then waking up the next day, going to classes and it becomes cyclical and they, they bring that into the office. And then that's why they get hired because they work hard. They want to prove themselves and they don't, they don't have the wherewithal to to realize that i gotta stop for a minute i need to take a break i need to do more than just drink coffee and sit in front of my computer yeah. um but i think there has there is a shift especially nowadays where you know you and i can work on a project you're in germany i'm in the states and we can do it without stress like yeah. It's the communication has gotten so much better that this regular nine to five going to the office sort of shtick it's not necessary i i think it's it's outdated i would even go a step further and would say not only the communication has gotten better but the focus on it is much more important because yeah. since it has been like the vital um the vital approach of making something like remote work even happening i mean duh right um, <laughs> um more people are taking care of how it's done like like setting up the meetings not making too many meetings because you still want to do the work and right. scheduling things like all like the entire organization 
feels like it has shifted towards being more efficient and mm -hmm. not miscommunicate because there's no way someone will just stand up, come over to your desk and be like, did I get this right? Uh, can I change yeah. it like this and do that? Like you have to figure this out right away because everything else is scheduled meetings. Yep. I, I can't tell you how, um, when I was in house, how many meetings I had to sit in that I had no input for. They had no bearing on my job. And these happened daily. And they didn't, they, they weren't, they weren't a part. I, I wasn't even a part of them. I didn't say anything the entire time. And all I did was, you know, either doodle looking, looking or start. Good. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm there for, uh, I'm, I'm there for my good looks Hello. and my charm. <laughs> Just nodding and smiling. That's what I do. <laughs> it's, uh, I would doodle or I would start to nod off. And that's, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I... I I'm <clears throat> much, much happier now. The amount of meetings that I've had to go to for this company, uh, for, for working for Cryptic, doing freelance, I had to drive down to the studio twice. In the two years I've been working... And it was just to get introduced to new members of the team and to have a free lunch. So, <laughs> uh, like, for the most part, communication is handled really, really well. And, yeah, and, yeah you know, it's... it's um, communication. <laughs> communication. <laughs> oh, Stop these wings face. are delicious. <laughs> 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 but, but no, I would absolutely agree with you that that more stress is 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 put on more importance is put on um, communication nowadays. Especially, I've noticed it in the past few years doing freelance, where yeah, you know, the, sending deliverables to the company has changed to become more accessible to everybody on the team. So you're not yeah. just emailing somebody; you're posting it somewhere on a on a mural for everybody to see um, at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so you get you get all your feedback, you go and you make changes and you post the update. It's super effective and you don't have to sit in a 60 to, you know, two hour meeting, 60 minutes to two hour meeting. So, yeah. I've always wondered if if meetings were also there so people could just show how important their decisions are. I don't know if. Yeah, I know. It's 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 like it's that it's it's a weird thing to say and it's probably not getting us anywhere but since you mention it <laughs> since, since you mention it i'm like why but why do they want me to sit in a meeting and listen to all this stuff from a department i'm not even a part of right why yeah. i don't, yeah, I don't I... care for 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 accounting <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i'm not a programmer i don't need yeah. to like obviously every aspect of creation or idea like every of production is important every aspect in the company is important but i don't need to know programming updates in order yeah. for me to draw an orc that's really that doesn't affect me at all um do, do they think maybe that it's about growing as a team together and figuring out what everybody's sometimes, doing and being yeah, valued? Oh, is it just like, I just want to have everybody here because, you know, I don't want to even think about who not to invite. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that would be work, right? Like, who works I want to be the popular that? one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> some, sometimes you would have meetings that would last all day and you would hear from everybody in the department at the project. And that that's just... Yeah. You you reach a milestone. You have a big studio studio meeting for the updates, and I would talk for five minutes. Hey, I drew this character, and you'd show the art on the screen, and yeah. that's all I would say for for a good two hours, and and mm. uh, then I would have to listen to everybody else. But for the most part, they meetings can be important, just so everybody's on the same page as far as yeah. where the project is, where the project needs to go. Um, if there's anything that needs to be changed, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, uh, I wasn't needed in the meetings I attended, you know? I don't know. I mean, I'm very much about working very efficient. Um, now people yeah. would say, oh, German, huh? no, but it's not that it's, it's just simply because <laughs> <laughs> 
It simply I was drinking water. I almost, I almost spit that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's simply, it has, there's this joke, right? About how many, how many Germans you need to put in a light bulb. I don't one, know this one. One. It's, it's, we are, we are very efficient and we don't have any humor. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so I, I'm just thinking about efficiency when I'm thinking about meetings. So I mean, mm -hmm. you could you could build them in segments and like parts that everybody has to hear, and then parts that nobody has to hear. I mean, I don't know, and it's it's just I don't even know why I'm getting so much into this topic, but I, I no, waste some. I mean, I wasted yeah, yeah, so yeah. much time in meetings. Yeah, I did, I did too. And that, I mean, that's not every company. There are companies where, like like I said, this uh, Blue Shell Games company, at rest, rest in peace, Blue Shell Games, um, <laughs> where, where, yeah, everybody, when you, had, when you had the big group meeting, it wasn't even a big group. It was like 15 people and you mm. just went around and you said, hey, I just made this and made this and I made this and everybody's mm. caught up and you're good to go. And it was like maybe an hour long and then you all had lunch and... But but yeah, some of the some of the companies that have the, the the more corporate feel to them, or you know, where you have partners overseas, or or you know, overlords or whatever, it's <laughs> overlords. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, those are the people you never meet that are making millions of dollars. Um, yeah, the corporate overlords. They, we all got some they, Illuminati yeah, on top of like, the building. They're like dance puppets, dance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they those are the ones where the meetings that I'm in most of the time they they didn't pertain to me. They weren't important for it mm. wasn't it was important for me to be there. But I'm not in those meetings anymore. I don't have meetings. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, good good for you, really. I'm I'm pretty happy about that for you. Yeah. We can, I can I can I can relate. Good. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, it's uh Becoming becoming a freelancer has probably been the best decision ever, simply because I can I can execute all these mind farts just like this podcast. You know, mm -hmm. I can yeah. just I can just try and and see where it's going. And if not, then well, then fuck it. <laughs> just do something something yeah, different. No, no harm, no foul. You just you go yeah. in. You you take a swing. If you miss, whatever. You either try again or you try something different. It's yep. Yesterday Whatever. I was sitting at my desk and I was I was I was just thinking because I, I saw a friend posted um, this little booklet and it was full of ink drawings that she made during October and she oh, okay. was not allowed to use a certain word anymore um, because oh. of certain regulations about mm -hmm. a specific month. I'm and, tracking. <laughs> And uh, so I was, I was just thinking, like, why is there not a, something like a, like a registry where all people put in all their books and people can find that and stuff? Like, I was, you know, this is this is stuff that is happening all the time, and I'm realizing sometimes that I'm, I'm kind of going over the goal. I'm shooting over the goal with this. It's like, mm -hmm. um, I should probably organize my time very differently and not just do whatever I want to do and then afterwards see that I don't have enough time. Like talking about efficiency, right? Like this is... Um... Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. So and this happens when I'm thinking. Yeah. I mean, and that's that's kind of the joy of freelancing. Um, mm. I would love to say that my days are highly organized, but they're not. <laughs> uh, you had mentioned... Uh, 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 that you 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 know you wake up early because sleep is boring, but I yeah. love sleep so much. <laughs> it's I, so like waking up, no. you know, nine nine thirty, rolling out of bed, making breakfast, and then you know I I get my work done. I put in the hours I need to to get to get my assignments in. But even you know I'll be working and then I'll be like, oh god, I'm feeling sluggish. I need to go out and go for a walk. I need to get some fresh air. And then you can come back and all of a sudden you have more ideas popping in your head. And mm. and it's it's those little breaks that you can give yourself that, you know, spur these new ideas, you know, um, oh, I could try this, you know, yeah. like I could start a podcast, you know, mm. I can't, I don't want to do that. But I should buy a boat. I, I should buy a boat. I can fly a plane, those kind of things. I really should buy a boat. I mean, we live close by a closer river. I really should buy a boat. 
I live close to the ocean. I am not buying a boat. <laughs> well, that's, that, yeah, but that's that's a different kind of boat. Yeah, that's a terrifying situation. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we should just get a boat, like without a motor, you know, like just to row the boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm too lazy for that. I'm gonna buy a robot to row my boat. But I really think that sleep is boring. I think so since I was a kid. Um, having dreams is useless. And, and <laughs> also some, some, <laughs> and sometimes it's like, it's, it's, I'm, I'm waking up angry about the shit that I was dreaming. You know, like it was like, why did I just dream that? That was even more a waste of time. You don't sometimes find that, that dreams help you figure out problems or dreams help you deal with the stuff that's, hard in your life sometimes where it, it sort of you know parses it down into manageable weird goofy segments so you your your brain can process it more so i think that 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 my dreams are probably working like that but i'm not really remembering those because the oh, ones okay. that i actually remember are the ones that i'm waking up and then i'm laughing about them um <laughs> or where I'm just absolutely disgusted or I'm just angry because I know a friend or my wife did something in, in, my, in my dream where I'm just taking the feeling and then she's just like sitting there and she's like, good morning and having a breakfast. And I'm like, oh, I can't I believe know. you did that. Yeah, in my, in my, in my, in my dream. And How it wasn't dare. even you. Like, I'm, I'm aware of that and I'm, I know that it's yeah. a dream, but... Yeah, but yeah. Those still, those those off. dreams where where something bad happens. Obviously, when you wake up, you still have that emotion. But I've had dreams, like I'll I'll have I'll have played a video game. Like I played, there was a, a, a one of the Batman games. I got that for birthday or something, and I was playing that for mm. hours. And then, you know, that night I was dreaming of that game where I was Batman. And in the middle yeah. of the night, um, <laughs> in in the game, you know, one of the combo moves, Batman does this weird suplex where he grabs a dude and you know flips him over his back. And in my dream, I was fighting bad guys, and I I had grabbed my wife and sort of just rolled her over my body to the other side of the bed, and then and then she's like, "What was that?" And I woke up and I'm like, "Oh, I'm uh, I'm sorry, I was Batman." And it was just like this weird. I was being Batman, baby. I'm sorry. <laughs> and of course, her reaction was, "Oh, okay." They're like, "She's like, what?" And then I'm like, "Can I have my spot back?" Because I rolled her from hers over to my side of the bed. Just like, <laughs> so sometimes yeah. sleep can be fun like that. <laughs> well, Gary's wife, you should be very happy that he didn't dream of an actual suplex. Yeah, yeah. I don't have the flexibility for an actual suplex, so. And she, then you she, just she like, like I don't know, giving her a drop kick or something, or, <laughs> or the tombstone pile driver Hard. or something, you know. And, and... <laughs> it's harder, harder to do laying prone than you think. <laughs> I, I did the only thing Batman could do, laying in bed. When I was a kid, and my my parents had the opinion that I had to go to sleep, I was jumping on the couch away from them because I didn't want to. I always felt like sleep was a massive waste of time. It's it's fucked up because when you sleep, you kind of like it and you don't really want to mm -hmm. get up. But at the same yeah. time, I like being productive way too much to even consider sleep a good thing. That's how much I like being productive. <laughs> you and I are on opposite ends of the sleep spectrum. Yeah, I'm on opposite ends with a lot of people. For example, with my wife, because she loves sleeping more than anything. And I yeah. just don't get it. I don't get it. It's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> in, in some respects, I kind of envy you because I would love to just spring out of bed at seven o'clock and be like, here I go, doing my thing. I got Bro, to it's not like I'm not tired. No, no, no. It's not like I'm not tired. This is even oh, okay. the more annoying part. I'm aware that I need sleep oh. and I hate it. I wish oh, that I wouldn't okay. have to. I can, I can understand that some people um, are just uh, pulling all-nighters all the time. But at the mm -hmm. same moment, I realized that it's super unhealthy because I've been there. Yeah. And it's, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it really just feels like someone, like like I'm having fun, you know, like I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm actually experiencing something. And then at some point it's, all right, you need to take a break, eight hours, go away. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's that time again. You know, I, I can't don't remember the last time. I can't remember the last time I did a, an all nighter. I think the latest that I stay up now is maybe two. And mm. then because I stay up late and if I'm productive up until two, then I'd be like, okay, I'm feeling a little tired. I'll go to bed and I give myself permission to sleep in a little bit later. And yeah, you know, I try to try to balance it out, but it's weird because there's so many things you have to be mindful of when you go grow older. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, there are, I'm not kidding you young people listening to this. There are sicknesses and conditions out there that you never even heard of, but everybody knows of when they go 30 and even more when you go 40, <laughs> you, you have, <laughs> there's, a thing, there's a thing called second puberty. And you are super fine, for example, with eating all kinds of foods or drinking alcohol at specific times of the day. And then at some point, your body will just be like, well, fuck you. And then, <laughs> and then you're getting refluxes for the weirdest fucking reasons. And <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah, you, you, slow, you, you slowly start to feel your body wither. Uh, <laughs> like a you'll, raisin you'll, oh yeah yeah oh yeah i'll i i i feel it like i'm doing everything i can to stay on top mm. of it i'm i'm you know i'm exercising as much as i'm able to uh my wife and i actually went vegetarian last year so yeah me know, too yeah it's it's been it that those are two things that we have control of that we can do mm. and it's helped a lot i take mm. vitamins all that stuff you're supposed to do you take but, vitamins um, but I, you know, I take Tylenol. I take baby aspirin for my <laughs> aches and pains. No, uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, if you put in, if you pull in an all night, if I put in an all nighter and I'm up until six, um, I will feel it the next day. Like yeah. I will hurt in parts of my body where I'm like, why? Why does this happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, that's age, that's kids. A, <laughs> it's a massive. Like like headaches and stuff like that, or I don't know. I mean, like like even even just your muscles feeling achy, and you were like, mm -hmm. "Am I getting sick or something? Do I do I get the flu or whatever?" I mean, I, I yeah. probably shouldn't even even say that right now in this current <laughs> situation. But I'm I mean like like even before that, people, yeah, like your 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 limbs are hurting and stuff like that. And you're like, "Yeah, well, your body didn't rest enough, you fucking idiot." Yeah, yeah. I think when you're younger, you don't realize how important sleep is to yes. your your body healing. No, I didn't. No, I didn't either. I didn't either. And now all of a sudden, all these people are like, you need to get sleep, my dude. Yeah. Also, you should drink water. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's one of the funniest things ever. I have an app that tells me to drink water. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to be reminded that I have to drink water. And I'm like, why would you have it? This is the most privileged thing I've ever heard. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. I'm so lazy that I have I an app eat. that's like... <laughs> you just need to develop an app that's like, hey, dipshit, maybe you should drink some water. Huh? Yeah, right? Can you please remember next time to drink water before I, I give you an electroshock or something? Like, just, just drink because, I mean, you're drinking all the time right now. I forgot to, to get my water here. But at the same, I would be drinking all the time. And I understand yeah. it. Like, but people are, like, this is, this is probably the point where you should realize that something is going in the wrong direction when you're working, when you forget to drink, and when you forget to eat then mm -hmm. your work behavior should probably change in some way. And I'm not saying that in a judgmental way, because I have been there myself, not with, not with, um, with drinking, but with eating. And oh, okay. I, I would be, I mean, I mean, people who know how I look like, right? Like I can, I can afford it to skip a meal here and there, <laughs> right? It's okay. But I don't, I don't, I don't get how you can really forget to drink I don't, I don't get it i mean i understand being so engrossed in your work that you forget you know uh you skip lunch or you you know you you, you, just, you just don't think about it you're so yeah. into whatever you're working <clears throat> on that that it 
it's it's like this non-existent thought. Like it doesn't mm-hmm. even compre- like dawn on you. Uh, even forgetting, you know, oh, that's right. I had to pee an hour ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> I forgot. And I did. And I forgot to stand and, up. And I did. And, and now I have a mess to clean up. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, I I, I think the older the, the it's it's the older you get. When you're younger, you can kind of afford you can afford that. But the older you get, the more you realize I need X amount of sleep. I need you know X amount of water, and you make a you make mm. a cognitive effort, a conservative effort to 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 do those things to make sure that you're taking care of yourself, and that's that helps your that helps your workflow during the day. I'll find out, like I'll I'll discover if I'm like I'll start like right now I'm sitting up in my chair, but and you know my Cintiq is over here. But the more I, the more tired I get, the more you know uh, I'll I'll start sliding back until mm. the point where I'm I'm reaching up like this to my Cintiq and I'm like, oh, yeah. I think it's time. I think it's time to go to bed now. Yeah, where I have well, I'm to right stretch. There with you, but this happens like per hour all the time. Like I'm and, for some reason, yeah. Or, or I'm like, that, like like this, you know, like like a shrimp. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I do that all the time. I do that all the time, and like mm-hmm. hunched over, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 then those those are the, those are the times where you need to um, uh, you need to give yourself permission to get up, move around, stretch, take a break, drink some water, mm-hmm. you know, have some food, whatever. You know, it's all it's all it's all part of uh, you know that self care regimen, that mental health, physical health regimen. I'm one of the people who are still having conversations on telephones, not in, only in video calls. And I made it um, at some point. I didn't. I stopped thinking about it. And I'm just doing it. Whenever I have the phone in my hand, I stand mm-hmm. up and I walk around like every time. And now I can't. Oh. I can't stop anymore. Every time yeah. I would have someone on the phone, I would. I can't properly talk with someone when I'm just sitting down. It feels super unnatural to me. And now I always have to walk. Wow, that's. <laughs> I'm. I'm trying to think if I do that too. I'm conditioning like myself to do that without that's realizing great. it. That's actually really good. Then, like, yeah, considering I how much I'm it, sitting yeah. every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think most of the time, I'll I'll get up and I'll walk and then I'll go and lay down on the couch, <laughs> and it totally just <laughs> negates whatever like, yeah. you know thought i had well i'm getting healthy now no it's just i just mm-hmm. i stand up to go lay down that's i i should move and then you just walk over and then like okay that's enough and then you lie <laughs> down for two hours or i'm really winded this couch was so far away <laughs> <laughs> dude this was fun i i'm really super happy that we had the chance to uh to catch up a little and uh thanks for all your thoughts on these topics um, i'm happy yeah i'm happy to have I'm happy we didn't mess up our schedules or get confused in any way. Yeah, because we didn't, right? <laughs> we never did that. No, 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 not once did that happen. We're completely because, and totally on it. Because we're efficient. Uh, that's right. And we know what our jobs entail. Holy. <laughs> no, but it was super, it was, it was a lot of fun getting, getting the, to chat. And yeah, I mean, the, I guess the, the takeaways for anybody listening are drink water, get your sleep take yeah. breaks and yeah. uh do what you need to do to uh have a creative and happy life but uh, <laughs> thank you it was super life. super pleasure uh pleasure being a part of this so thank you for having me yeah it was great having you adios all right